whole journey through the voice stuff really kind of started with um, us, with Brianna auditioning for The X Factor, where we went to Long Island and stood in line with thousands of people and spent all day just to sing a few times in front of some judges. Um, that helped us to understand the process a little better. So when we went back and did it with The Voice in New York City, uh, we had a little bit of an idea of what would happen. We still stood in line with thousands of people, um, went from room to room and, and auditioned and Brianna sang a few different times. But at the end of the day, she was given a red card, which meant that she was invited back to the uh, private audition uh, callbacks in New York in a sound studio. So we came back about a week later into New York where they filmed her and recorded her in a private studio. Um, and then the producers took all of those back to decide who was going to then make it to the next step. So we waited for a phone call. The phone call came and we were flown out to um, L.A. for the executive callback. The executive callbacks in front of Mark Burnett and a whole bunch of people, um, producers, executive producers, band director, um, a lot of people we didn't know at the time where Brianna had to sing a couple of songs in front of them. Uh, so we went through that process. We were out there for a whole week just so that she could sing for about 10 minutes. So when you walk in there, when you walk in the room that you're gonna audition in, there's like th three sets of couches filled with producers, um, the, all the vocal coaches, a choreographer, um, all these important people like with the show and stuff um, not the judges yet and so it was kind of intimidating not knowing what you were gonna walk into and then see all these important people here so um, I was I was really nervous at that point like before I was like oh it's fine there'll probably be like one person in there and stuff no like when you walk in there it's like you have a really important audience to perform in front of and I remember this one guy sitting in like the corner of the couch and um, one of the couches, and he had the gray, longish hair, and um, he just had this look of total intimidation. Like, nothing could make him smile. It seemed like he was, he scared me the most. Like, I tried not to look at him when I was singing and stuff. But um, I was really nervous. And so I sang the cup song first, and that went fine. It, they let you sing a verse, chorus, a verse, and a chorus, and then they stop you. And then, so, you know, I was feeling okay, and, um, you know, my dad was giving me a thumbs up from, like, the corner of the room where he was standing, and, um, so I go to sing my second song, Glitter in the Air, and I totally flunk, like, the first line of it, and I mess it up, and I sing some other line, and, um, I, the second line, I, like, got back on track, but, like, once I forgot that line, I thought I was done the whole process. They were just going to stop me there and be like, okay, thank you. Thanks for coming. Being sent home now. <laughs> um, but, you know, they let me sing through the verse, the chorus, the verse, the chorus. After we left L.A., um, we were told that we would get a phone call um, within a few weeks if we were going to be invited back to, um, to the blinds. So when that phone call came, everybody was very excited. Um, we were invited back to go to the blind audition, so we went out to L.A. for a month. Um, once we arrived out in L.A., um, we spent the entire month kind of sequestered in a hotel. Um, everybody was very nervous. Um, there was a lot of amazing talent out there. So one of the good things is we got to meet pretty much everybody on Voice Season 6 because we were stuck in a hotel with them all for a month, um, in the same meetings, eating lunch together, every night out in the courtyard with impromptu jam sessions. Um, it was a lot of fun. Throughout that month, you did everything to prepare yourself for the blinds. So we did wardrobe, we got to go to wardrobe, and they picked out outfits, and you brought some of your clothes, and um, they have racks and racks of clothes, like really expensive clothes and stuff. And um, you get your outfit for the blind picked out. They pick three outfits and they take pictures of you. And um, the producers, I think, pick the one that they want you to wear. 
And so once you did that, you did vocal lessons and everyone got a vocal coach and my vocal coach was Trelawney Rose and she's amazing. Um, but so my first vocal lesson with her, I walk in and she's like, oh, I was at your executive audition. Like, I'm so excited to work with you. And the first thing that popped in my head was when I forgot those words. And I was like, oh, dear Lord. <sighs> she saw that. Um, yeah, so I thought I got off on the wrong foot with her. But it was okay. <laughs> you rehearsed with the band when you're out there. Um, the band leader, Paul, he's really intimidating, but he knows a lot. You got a rehearsal on the stage, and so this, um, the actual stage, like with the chairs and stuff, and so um, that was like kind of nerve-wracking, but really like surreal. Just being up there, I remember feeling like, like this cannot be happening. You know, like you're actually on the stage that you see in, on TV and stuff, and it's like so much smaller in person than it looks on TV, and like, it's not all like big and flashy as it seems on TV. Um, but yeah, that was really cool. As the month unfolded, we ended up being moved to a different hotel right before the blind audition started so that the people that went wouldn't be able to then tell other people waiting to go how it went, who got picked, and how things are going. So they have that whole thing kind of pretty well figured out. Um, we spent that last week in a, in a hotel every day going to see if our artist number would be called so that we would then be going on stage the next day. And um, after the third day, um, we went into the meeting to see whose numbers were going to be called and a big group of people came in. Uh, the corporate attorneys, the executive producers, all sorts of people. And they let us know that this has never happened before, but all the teams filled up really quickly uh, for, for season six. So everybody that was left uh, was invited to come back again, but that we weren't going to get a chance to actually go out and see if a chair would turn. Uh, so that was disappointing. Um, but the experience overall was, you know, a once in a lifetime kind of thing. Coming out of the experience, it was like, for a 15-year-old to be flown out to California, you know, out of like thousands of people, it was kind of hard for me to wrap my head around. And it was very surreal for me. And um, when I didn't get an audition, I I woke up the next morning and I just, I had this feeling in my stomach like that, that couldn't have happened to me, that that's not supposed to happen to me. Like I'm supposed to get an audition and stuff and like that's what's supposed to happen. and. It didn't, and so I just, it, it took me a couple days to really let it sink in that like, I think when I was on the plane I realized, you know, when you were just flying away from it all, <laughs> you're just like, it's over, you're not getting an audition. So now that this is over, I've been writing a lot of my own music, and um, I have about like 10 songs now, and I definitely, I don't think I want to take the route of making it into the music business through like a TV show or competition and stuff. And I, I really just want to be known for my music. And I think on a TV show you get known for, oh, she sang that song so well and stuff. And um, I definitely want to just make it, you know, solely on my music and what my music's about and stuff. Um, so I'm definitely going to focus on that and I'm definitely going to start gigging places in town. Um, so it's kind of what I plan to do um, after this is over and I'm going to take all the stuff I learned there and definitely apply it to everything that I'm going to do in the future. I don't want to talk while I'm out in a sea of wonders I look for the good and fight off the bad until they plunder Want to explore the depths of London land Instead of walking on this pre-named sand and just saying words and wasting breath, I want to get lost on the never-ending bus. I just want me and my thoughts, oh yeah, that's all I want. I want to see it.
thousand centuries go by and just get lost in my mind. Oh, I want to get lost on a never-ending bus. Buy me a one-way ticket to New Orleans, at least then I'll have to party. Buy me a one-way ticket to NYC, so then no one can ever find me. Buy me a one-way ticket to Just a little bit caught in the middle of life There's a maze and love is a riddle I don't know where to go Can't do this alone, I've tried And I don't know why Slow it down, make it stop Or else my heart is going to fall Cause it's too much, yeah it's a lot to be something I'm not. 